three members of the Joint Police and Military Task Force deployed to Strebo near Agogo on Operation Cowlick had been transferred from the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital to the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital after they were shot by nomad nomadic herdsmen yesterday. Three military officers and a policeman were involved in the accident. The four officers were responding to a distress call by a woman over destruction of her farm by some cattle. The Joint Police and Military Task Force say they'll maintain a strong presence in the area despite the shooting incident. My colleague Ohemin Teria spoke earlier to an emergency and trauma nurse at the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, Imano Menta, who explains why the three had to be transferred to the Konfranoche Teaching Hospital. We've been in Agogo uh, since the morning monitoring developments here after reports of attack on the police uh, military uh, team emerged yesterday. Uh, according to the police, the uh, joint police military team, uh, who are members of the Operation Cowlick, were attacked at about 12 uh, p.m. yesterday at Srebosso, a suburb of Agogo, here in the Asante Achim North uh, District. And this morning, uh, we've been, we have been speaking to doctors and nurses at the Agogo Presby Hospital to find out from them uh, how the four officers are doing uh, at the hospital. Uh, but a few minutes ago, I was told that three of the military officers uh, have been transferred uh, to the Okonfanochi Teaching Hospital. Uh, let me speak to uh, Mr. Emmanuel Mensah. Uh, he's a trauma uh, and critical uh, nurse at the Ogo Hospital. So tell me, at what point did you transfer the three uh, uh, officers to Konfanochi Hospital? Okay, yesterday in the evening, around 7 p.m., I uh, know around 6 p.m., we reassessed them and then we realized that one of them who had a shot of the pellet down the throat began, to, uh, began uh, becoming dyspneic, becoming breathless, cannot breathe because there was edema forming. <coughs> Sorry, the upper airway was getting obstructed, so he was choking. So we quickly had to rush him to the theater and then intubate him. But the prior decision to refer them had already been sustained because the other two have a pellet at the base of the skull, which was equally causing CSF to bleed through the ears. So we had to refer. And the other one, too, was having a pellet by the vertebral column. So it was initially critical that we need to refer, both uh, the three of them. But the fourth person was lucky. He only had a shot of a pellet in the left shoulder. Uh, which has been dressed this morning. Fortunately, he's come for review and he's stable. That is the commander himself. Okay. Uh, be before we, we came on there, uh, we were discussing the air condition, and you said that at that point, if you had not taken that decision to react, uh, something on top what could have happened. What exactly was the danger? Initially, we were thinking of transferring the patient faster, but we realized that the ambulance services are not that forth and coming that we could meet a challenge and then we could lose the patient on the way. So we, the initial decision was to wait and then hold on a bit just for a few minutes and then see how best the patient will be before transferring, just to make sure the patient is stable. But unfortunately, within 30 minutes prior to taking that, uh, after taking that decision, the patient began to complain that he was choking, that he couldn't swallow saliva, which was a danger sign. And later we realized that the tongue was coming out, which means that the patient is choking and the breath had become hoarse, <laughs> like someone who is choking. So we quickly have to rise the patient to the theater just to secure the airway. The airway was the most important thing at then. One thing that is so common with the agogo and issues relating to people who are falling victims to this nomadic herdsmen pharma clash is the fact that people want to uh, troop into the hospital to catch a glimpse of whatever happens here. So fill me in, what was the situation yesterday? <laughs> it was quite critical because we couldn't control the crowd. People were just trooping in, some were patients, some were patient attendants, some were just passerbys and other schools just come from town to come and see what is going on because it's always quite a sad news because the police and then the force workers, they come to try and save the community and then they end up becoming victims. So it's like the whole crowd of the town were like trying to come and see what is going so on. How did you manage to control the crowd? Uh, we had to speak to them. We had to assure them that the, their people are okay and they are now in a safe hands. So they should come down, come back during the visiting hours and then they can get a chance to see them so that for now they could just leave a space for us because they could either cause another stampede or anything.
No, but it does uh, affect the work that you're supposed to do as a medical staff for the victims who were rushed here. Not at all. Not at all. There were just some hindrances, like you were meeting, bouncing in between to people here, there, and everywhere, but it didn't stop us from any, anything. Because I must say, uh, it's a normal day for the people of Agogo, uh, just that you see people in groups uh, discussing the matter, uh, somehow of the opinion that once the uh, military and the police are involved, uh, this uh, could, you know, attract some uh, quick response from authorities. Uh, though the, the team has been here, they, they, they've been with the people for quite some time now, as far as the Operation Cow Leg is concerned. Uh, don't forget uh, our detailed uh, joint news documentary, uh, Violent Shepherds, that catalog the activities of uh, nomadic herdsmen and farmer clashes in Agugu, uh, in the Ashanti and their coal areas in the eastern region and then Kintampo and Brekum in the Bono Ahafo and other parts of the country uh, mentioned, uh, took into consideration the fact that this has become an albatross and a security threat uh, uh, to the nation. So a lot of people in Agugu are more concerned about what happens to them. Less. But let me say that uh, the police say they, they are not going to uh, mount any special operation. They are not going to change their operational procedures as far as uh, the combating the nomadic herdsmen farmer clashes in Agogo is concerned. They continue with, with their presence, will be felt by the people, and then uh, both on the ground and also uh, on the farm.